Hi guys, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master and today we're going to be towing with our new Land Rover Defender 110. We've had it out and about around town and off-road. It's exceptionally comfortable and exceedingly capable. However, we're going to put a caravan behind it today and give you our first impressions. It is a three and a half ton ATM towing capacity with a 350 kilo ball load. So it's going to be quite interesting how this thing handles it considering it's got air suspension and that type of technology. So we're going to head around the back of the car now and sort out the hitch height and stuff like that and get out on the road. Uh, whenever you're connecting any trailer to the vehicle, we have to be aware of the relationship between the coupling height on the caravan and the tow ball or tow pin height on the back of the car. The aim here is to get the trailer or caravan relatively level when towing. Now, the good thing about the Land Rover is because it's got airbag suspension in the back, we don't have to account for the suspension droop on the car, because it'll always lift itself back up. Now, in the back of the Defender at the moment, I've got the standard Land Rover tow tongue with a 50mm ball in it. And from the ground to the centre of that ball, let's call it about 420, which is within the ADR for a 50mm ball coupling. Now, a typical off-road caravan or trailer in Australia will have a ball height um, quite a bit higher than that to get the clearance. Now with uh, off-road um, coupling like our DO35, you are allowed to have a tow ball height higher than the ADR requirements, which is 460 mil high. So on this one, just for a point of reference, we're about 520, 530. So you can see from that that the factory tow tongue is not going to work in our application. It's actually made a bit worse by this because our tow pin is slightly shorter than the 50 mil ball, so it's even bigger difference between the two vehicles. So in order to deal with that, I set this up a bit earlier. This is an adjustable tow tongue. So with this guy, we've set it up as close as we can to the caravan there. So we're looking at about 5, 10 ish. So we're going to have a, a slight bit of um, lean down on the caravan. A little bit isn't too bad. Now, the thing to um, be aware of by using this type of um, hitch though is that in the owner's manual for the Defender, it is very specific on using their factory hitch, in particular the height of the ball um, from the vertical plane and the offset of the ball out the back of the car. Obviously, with this, it's going to be quite a bit further out. So it's going to put more load into the tow bar. So that may be a warranty issue if you were to have problems later down the track, but something to be aware of. However, for our towing today, we're not too worried about that. We're not, we're not going too far, so hopefully there shouldn't be any issues. All right, now we've got that all done. I'm going to um, put the pin in and we're going to attach the caravan. And just before we head out, I'm just going to weigh everything and see where it ends up. The caravan should be sitting, I think about 3.1, 3.2. So it's close to the capacity of the tow vehicle. Alright, so we almost connected the caravan to the car here, however we've run into a bit of a snag. The little carabiner guy that fits on the end of the breakaway cable, that's a normal one that comes with it, that's quite small and doesn't go on the, go on the bracket here. We've got a bigger one that we found on another caravan that also doesn't go on here. So typically you can manipulate this into the slot that the safety chains go into. On this car, it just does not fit, so we're going to have to bodge something up just to, um, just to do the, the testing today and come up with a more permanent solution in the future. So if you've got one of these cars and you're towing with it or you're going to buy one of these cars, just bear this in mind that you might have to find a, a non-standard solution to attach the safety chain cable. We've 
We've just put the Defender over our scales with the caravan on the back of it. And with myself in the driver's seat, um, we've got 1,750 kilos that the pads weighed on the rear axle. Now for reference, the rear axle capacity of the Defender is 1,800 kilos. So there's only about 50 kilos left in it. And one of the other guys here just behind the camera just jumped in the passenger seat as well just to see how things went if you put a bit more weight in it. And with two people in the car, we've got the rear axle to 1,810 kilos, so over rear axle capacity. So that's a bit of a concern if you plan on towing a heavy caravan. So given the weight we just measured on the rear axle of the Defender, we thought we'd better just double check the ball weight on this caravan. It's a three and a half ton ATM van, so we we're expecting about 10%. We got 330, 334 kilos approximately on the ball. So it is within the capacity of the Defender. Now, if we were at the peak, 350 kilos, say the owner of this put his bikes on the front, we'd probably anticipate another 30 to 40 kilos on the back axle approximately. Now that does mean with a three and a half ton van on the back, we are right on the axle capacity of this vehicle. Now the vehicle is absolutely bog stock. Um, the fuel tank is brimmed. I did that just before we shot. So it is about how you would run the vehicle. There may not be a lot of capacity left then for other accessories on this vehicle. So we put the caravan over the scales now and that weighs about 3.3 tonnes. We're about 61.50 kilos in combination mass, which is 500 kilos under the capacity of the vehicle. And now we're going to head out onto the road, onto the highway and see how this tows this big caravan. Also keen to see how these mirrors go because the body is reasonably narrow and the mirrors are quite small. So interesting to see whether they've got good vision down the side of the car. Just left the factory out onto the main road, doing about 60, 70 kilometers an hour in a bit of traffic. And the little engine seems to pull very well. It um, is quite responsive. Getting it off the line, you do get a lot of torque converter slip, which probably is to be expected given it's got to make up for the lack of torque of the smaller engine. But so far it's pulling along quite well. Um, the mirrors, um, do restrict the view down the side of the caravan quite a bit so you have to be a bit careful when changing lanes like I'm about to do now. Um, however, it somewhat helps that this car is fitted with a lot of cameras and when you connect the caravan to the car it does know that it's got a trailer connected. It must be through the trailer plug somehow and there's some cameras which must be fitted into the mirrors that look back along the side of the car and on the caravan. So you do actually get a bit more vision through those and just with the mirrors alone. Wouldn't say they completely make up for the size of the mirrors or you know, are, a, are a replacement for the typical big towing mirrors we have in Australia, like the MSAs. But um, yeah, it's not too bad so far. So we're just gonna head out now to the highway get it up to 100 kilometres an hour and see how it goes there. What is noticeable when towing with the Defender is how comfortable it is. Like the car is normally very um, composed and comfortable on the roads, but even with this big weight on the back, it's very much in control. And just bear in mind that it is, you know, yes, it is airbags, but it is factory suspension as well. And that's typically not very good for towing. So we're just heading into some roundabouts now on the way out to the highway. Probably shouldn't take them too quickly as we're just seeing how this vehicle handles. You can see there it 
pulls away pretty well. You do have to anticipate the pull away if you're stopped, as it does take quite a bit of time for it to get moving. Um, it does say in the manual for the Defender that if you are starting on an incline, I think it says, that they suggest taking off in low range, which is a bit weird because that means if you're going through Toowoomba or somewhere like there with a few hills, you're going to be in and out of low and high, which is a bit of a pain. I don't know whether that's just torque management or whether it's to keep the transmission cool because it's got to slip so much to get the thing off the line. Um, just bet this is also the uh, four-cylinder diesel, which has been replaced with a three-litre six now. So maybe in the newer engines, it actually pulls away a bit better and maybe that low range start isn't quite the same requirement. Uh, the brakes are exceptionally good in this car. We've got disc brakes on this caravan as well. So it really does <laughs> slow down quite aggressively if you get on the brakes. Not too much roll as you go around the roundabouts there. Pretty, pretty normal. Right, as you can see there, the brakes are good. I'll have to turn those down in a sec. Okay, this is the last roundabout onto the highway. I'm gonna get it up to 100. Okay, here we go. So off we go, 80, 90, 100, <laughs> pulls very well, definitely seems more responsive than the, um, the mild 70 series V8, and that auto really makes the most of what this engine can do, it's an 8 speed box. So he's got plenty of gears to choose from. Now we're at 100, it's amazingly stable. Typically the vehicles I drive towing have got a heavy duty suspension package in them, which can make it a bit porpoisey and a bit bouncy. Um, on the highway you feel all the, all the road features. But this certainly isn't like that. It keeps control of it very well. Particularly with the heavy ball weights, um, other vehicles it pitches them up and down quite a lot. But because of the short rear overhang on this vehicle, it doesn't seem to be doing that as much. With the adaptive dampers, I imagine they also come into play controlling how the, the back end rides over the features in the road. You could definitely sit in this all day towing. Um, now I'm on the highway though lack of mirror width is definitely an issue. Not so much on driver's side, but passenger, all I've kind of got is caravan in the mirror. And the cameras down the side of the car don't do a huge amount to help that. So that'd be something to be cautious of if you're planning on towing a two and a half ton van. So, one of the good things that the Defender's got is a really detailed heads-up display here telling you what the fuel consumption is doing. At the moment, it's bouncing around a bit, but it's going between about 14 and 17 litres per 100, which I'd say is probably quite good for the size of the van that we're towing. Obviously, to get a better um, estimate of that, we need to do quite a few more kilometres to see where it balances out. Right, so 
So driving along now, I'm beginning to notice that the steering's a little bit twitchy in the Defender now. I think it's because of the ball weight on the back of the car. It deloads the front axle and Land Rover suggests that you don't use weight distribution systems on this vehicle because it will must counteract the benefits of the airbag suspension. So you do have to do quite a few smaller inputs to keep it online, which isn't um, unusual for towing heavy caravans, but it's just another thing you just notice as you're driving along. So we're just about to hit the Gateway Bridge here in Brisbane. So interested to see how it pulls it up there. All right, here we go, up the bridge. So this is 80 kilometers an hour all the way up the bridge. So what we're looking for here is it to hold the speed pretty well without having to rev its head off to get there or slow down. It does not seem to be an issue. It's powering up here. I'm very impressed with how this engine's handling the weight. We have some other um, four-cylinder vehicles on our fleet that we do tow with, and they don't tow as well as this, so a couple of D-Maxes. Now I'm stuck behind a truck, that'd be right, wouldn't it? So I we'll overtake the truck on a hill. Not going to be the fastest of overtaking manoeuvres, but there we go. That is impressive for such a small engine. It really does pull quite well. Wonder what it would be like with an extra 500 kilos um, spread between the car and the caravan, whether it would pull as well, because we are quite a bit under the GCM. So but yeah, so far it's, it's timing surprisingly nicely. Okay, we're back at base now, and first impressions on towing with the 110 Defender are exceedingly positive. It, it maintains its exceptional ride and composure with a 3.3 tonne caravan on the back. And I actually haven't driven many vehicles which um, tow quite as well as this. Given the size of the engine, it, it pulls well. Yeah, it is a bit, um, a bit laggy when you're trying to get up to speed because the torque converter is slipping a lot, but overall it tows very well. However, on the downside, the rear axle capacity looks like we're very close to it, given the big van on the back, and the mirrors. So particularly the one on the left-hand side is all but useless. And the, the camera system inside makes up for it a little bit, but not really enough to be satisfactory. Particularly where we have to comply with the ADRs on how far down the side of the van you need to be able to see. And we cover that in a Cruise Master Class video if you want to learn more about that. So if you are going to tow with a wide caravan with a 110 Defender, you might want to look into getting some mirror extensions or something like that. So that's it for towing today. We've got lots more videos coming out, so make sure you keep an eye out on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube so you don't miss out.